Hi everyone, welcome to our Books Publishing 101 webinar on urban research and urban studies. Thank you for coming and I'm really happy to see people joining. Um, I'm sh and uh, well, I'm going to be your presenter today. I'm Juliana Pitangi and um, I will introduce myself later a bit more. And with me today is also Deidre Hudson Royce. Uh, she's a, market, a senior marketing manager at Springer and she's gonna she's also the contact for my department the, for marketing and she's gonna be helping us with uh, the questions at the end so a uh, big thanks to Deidre for helping thank you and welcome everybody and also just to let you know that this session is being uh, the the webinar is being recorded but as you can see, you are all muted, and um, and this is to make it a bit more efficient, and, and and as we can have many participants today, so but you can really we welcome you to enter your questions in the questions box anytime during the webinar, and if you can think of anything you'd like to ask, please do uh, ask your questions because uh, I'm here to help. I'm happy to answer your questions. So welcome, and I think. We have more people registered and we expect more people to come in but in the meantime i can already start with uh, the plan for today and the thoughts behind the webinar a little bit about that and then we have more people join us right so welcome exciting <laughs> um let me pass the slide that oh, that's the agenda for today um these, these are the, the main points I wanted to uh, point on uh, today. So not very many. I won't talk for too long, I promise. Uh, I, I do aim to keep this short so we can get to questions soon. It's about 30 minutes and, and then we will have the Q&A at the end. So for my part, what I aim to do is give you a brief introduction, um, then tell you a bit about the benefits of publishing a book and uh, then the steps to publish a book, how you publish a book, what you can expect. Um, and also give an introduction of Spring as a book publisher. Maybe you are familiar, maybe not. And um, at the end, to give, I would like to give you an uh, overview of our urban research portfolio and uh, give you some information about that and Q&A at the end. So do feel free to enter your questions in the chat. Uh, oh no, sorry, in the questions box, like I said before, questions box. Uh, and uh, we'll answer it at, at the end of the webinar, right? So I think still short of some people. Oh, I think um, it would be good to mention the, the aims for today, why we organize it a little bit, and then I'll get right into it. Um, well, I just, I think um, a lot of people might be interested in book publishing, but they're not familiar with it. And then I thought, um, and it could be from research, uh, um, experienced researchers to uh, people who are starting their careers. I think there's a lot of mystery around book publishing um, and uh, people are, don't know what goes behind the curtains. But I, I swear it's quite straightforward and it, you, um, I, I can give, so that's why I thought it would be helpful to just give a presentation to let you know what goes on and so you, you know what to expect and to give a bit of insight into book publishing and it's not mysterious at all. It's, uh, it's yeah, it's simple really. Right. And another reason is to welcome new proposals. And I'll tell you a bit more about that during the webinar. So let's start. This is me. Like I said, I would introduce myself. I only put myself over here in this introduction because I'm the main contact for the areas um, that we're covering in this webinar, which is urban research and urban studies. So I'm Juliana Pitangi. Thank you so much for joining and also all of you that are joining still. I'm a books publishing editor at the Geography and Sustainability Research Department. Uh, I'm based in Dordrecht in the Netherlands, which is a very lovely historic city close to Rotterdam. If you ever come to the Netherlands, it's a really nice place to come by, to visit, uh, sorry. And um, my areas of expertise are, I call it a lot, urban research, 
Maybe it's the term I came up with, to be honest, but I like to say that because I'd like to be as uh, comprehensive as possible with the words I use. And I'd like to include any uh, discipline that is related to cities, space, urban, uh, urban studies. So that is urban studies, planning, urbanism, urban geography, spatial science, design, architecture, urban sociology, etc. And it could be also related disciplines, as you know, it can be very interdisciplinary or multidisciplinary. So there is, um, it's quite broad and names of departments vary. And um, so that, that's why. That's about me. Uh, let's move on. So why publish a book? And I, I included this first because it doesn't happen too often, but in my career, sometimes people say, well, why should I bother to write a book? You know, I'm very busy or, and uh, I, I don't see the point and I can better write journal articles. You can hear that once in a while. And as a book publisher, it can be very disappointing to hear um, also because the role of books is very different from journal articles and they definitely have an impact and a very different impact. So I thought to put together this, um, this part of the presentation. Basically, I came up with six main points of, as to why publish a book and they're all interrelated, basically. I think the book format, it, uh, it, it allows you to explore research in a, such a profound and articulate way and it gives a lot of depth that another sort of medium won't do. So that's the first, I think, really um, depth. And um, I, I often think that uh, in a strange way, a book can serve as a sort of social media, if you may. Well, it does, because once you publish a book, you're sharing it with the academic community and you're spreading the word about it. And other people who you don't know who might be researching in similar fields or in the same area, somewhere completely different on the other side of the world, will get to know what you're doing. And they, you might not even know them. And this might lead to new partnerships in the future. You're not, you never know. It connects people, connects researchers somehow. Um, but very different from social media, books um, validate research because uh, they go through a peer review process. And once you see an academic book, you, you know that it's, um, that it's trustworthy. You, um, you know it's been proven or you, uh, and the ideas are validated and so on. Uh, also, books have weight, and uh, literally, and they, they have an impact in the academic community. You get visibility, you reach a wide audience with the book. Also, uh, in a bit of a, a sort of a philosophical way, once you write a book, you are contributing to knowledge itself because you're building, in, um, you're building on the existing knowledge and you're adding to it, and other people will find new... Um, things and have new insights based on what you say. So that's quite neat. Um, but the most important one for many of you is that it helps you advance your career. It helps build a reputation. It looks good on a CV, good for grant applications and etc. So those I think are the main reasons for publishing a book, I would say. Now, I'm sure there are others. And I put here a few common myths that I, I find that exist. I don't think it's true at all, but sometimes we hear that. And it has to do with citations, that people say books don't get cited, they don't have an impact, and they don't have lots to offer for career building. This is all related to um, the citations. Well, they do get cited and it is substantial. Maybe indeed it's less substantial than journal articles, but, but it's really quite, quite considerable. It's substantial. Here you see the, the breakdown that we found was 35% uh, of the total of his book citations. So that's, uh, that's really good. And another thing I didn't mention is that a book will last for much longer. An article, well, people will know it for a couple of months, but uh, after that, it's old news and 
they won't uh, you know they it's it uh, you need to produce something else but a book it will last i think one to two years at least uh, if not more many more some last really a long time so i think uh, just to start i got there um i put those slides together and but right many of you might be interested and are thinking okay um how do i publish a book right how do i start and so i prepared a few slides to and uh, will give you an introduction on how you can do that it's not difficult at all i sometimes as publishing editor people ask me even how do i come with an idea on how to publish a book um and i i would say it, it, it is very difficult for me to say that because it's uh, I can't come up with an idea for for someone else, but well, basically it's through doing everything you do, and which might sound sound really obvious, of course, but it's through research that you will uh, have questions and you have insight, and we'll we will have ideas. I I was just looking at our books to see how the authors came up with their ideas i looked at the descriptions just out of curiosity and i put here some words of what i found out but they put basically it's through researching and discussions that that they will um have questions and will try to answer those in in, in the book and then uh, and will come up with ideas but i would say it's anything that inspires you that you find really interesting in research that you should go for uh, that are good ideas and then it will become a book proposal. And the interesting thing is the more our books, the more books will exist because it keeps going. The circle goes around and we'll have more publications that we'll build on and it, it all keeps going. But right, how do you formalize that proposal? How do you put together a proposal? These are the main elements. Again, very logical. It's the elements in a book. Um, you should put together a good summary of the benefits of your book there should be a need so you you need to let us know the need in the market for the book it needs to have a tentative title and a table of contents considering a good structure that makes sense and while you do all of this think of the coverage do let us know and think of the aims of the book which i think um, is, is quite important it has to have uh, to, you have to really know at that stage what you're aiming at with the research and not have something vague um, well, otherwise we can't evaluate do think through the names of contributors their backgrounds have a realistic timeline which a lot of people ask i would say that the ideal one is one year but it could be it could be less for a lot of people right it could be uh, six, even six months and it could be a lot more for others that's all fine but I would say something around a year is usually what we do one year two years but uh, one year is usually uh, the ideal and what should the proposal have what are the elements and I put this together like I said there's no mystery <laughs> these are really basic things that right almost a little bit evident but it makes a big difference if you think about them right there and maybe you're busy and you don't have to think about these you don't have time to think about these things but do when you're pitching a proposal to us because it has to be original and fresh uh, right no one wants to to know to hear old um old, old things it has to be really something that hasn't been done before uh, consider your selling points for the book what's interesting about it and um, uh, what are some of the hot topics for your book is also essential um, not something bland but again something that fascinates you something that you think is fascinating and will interest others um, but do uh, your research before you pitch a proposal of course because many times uh well it could happen well not many times but once in a while if you don't research it very well you might propose something that's already been done so number one is to really make sure you cover your ground you know exactly 
what's been done and you build on on that and write for the for the, your market and for your audience make sure that there is a market and an audience for the book you're proposing right right and after you send the proposal we'll send it for review which um, after um, it, it depends on how that goes on what feedback we receive we'll then uh, uh, we'll send you a publishing agreement and after that we send you the, the author guidelines and instructions on how to prepare the manuscript uh, and then we'll be in touch with you, helping with any questions until it's time to submit the manuscript. And when you do submit, then um, we'll check it. it. It might have to go through peer review again. It's, it really depends on the type of book it, it is. Uh, it might, if it's an edited volume, for instance, this step will be skipped because the editors do that themselves. But depending on the book, it goes through peer review again and then revisions you might have to revise the book until um, it, the metadata is finalized and it's ready to go into production right and then when it's published it's published as an ebook print my copy and we distribute it in all around the world in a springer link platform uh, 200 uh, sorry 100 10,000 institutions 50 million users worldwide um, and also to third parties like Amazon iTunes and through booksellers etc uh, et and via many channels we give you a lot of information also on how to self-promote the book because I should say um, getting your word out there helps a lot if the author will also do that um, and, and get it to the help us get it to the community and we have instructions even we'll have um, self-marketing guides for you to help you banners for institutional websites covers flyers uh, your book could be included in an e-newsletter depending and uh, we could do a bit of social media for your book we have a twitter account And um, uh, uh, oh, oops, I skipped. So a little bit about Springer. Um, I'm not sure how familiar you all are, but Springer, part of Springer Nature. Well, we have really a long history, and we're an established publisher. And in 2017, we had our 175th anniversary. So that shows really. Um, it's a long-standing company and other brands on the Spring and Nature um, had also um, also are quite established Macmillan also 175th anniversary but then in 2018 and uh, Nature in 2019 had its uh, 105th uh, anniversary um, and all of this well as Spring and Nature we became the largest academic book publisher in the world. Very reputed publisher in books across all areas in science, technology, humanities, social sciences. And every year we publish 13,000 books. Um, to date, 290,000 books available in our web shop and content platforms. So, and another word that is Another point that is very important, the last one, is we're a very innovative publisher. Um, digital book publisher, we were the first to offer electronic format, but not only that, open access, we're also the largest open access publisher. Should have been the last point here, but um, well, we forgot. Anyway, but we are. And um, now to give, uh, again, I uh, encourage you, I see there are some, uh, some things in the chat and some questions which we'll get to at, uh, at the end, but I do encourage you to ask questions and I hope I'm not going too fast and all, or too slow. <laughs> um, but, the, but the aim is to help and um, to, to, to reach out to you. Right, so for this is the last part of the webinar before the Q&A and I just wanted to give you an overview of our urban for portfolio 
And this is a nice skyline of New York that I found uh, to include. And um, well, also uh, Springer is um, now a really established publisher in, in the field. We've, we've grown so much and I've been working really hard since I started the program to, to get us there. And um, so really happy to how it's going. And I'll show you a little bit with first the numbers. So we've published more than 7,800 books. We have more than 100 book series. Um, we have really an, a global outreach with our ebook collections. And here, these are the main areas we cover, which I mentioned before, but maybe some of you missed. Urban studies, planning, urbanism, urban geography, spatial science, architecture, design, urban sociology. And there are a few others that um, might be related here that uh, don't appear because it's, it can be so interdisciplinary that it might be hard to, to include everything. Uh, and some of the topics covered, but not all. Uh, sustainable cities, resilience, sustainability really is a key topic for us that we do a lot on. Um, also with SDGs in mind urban governance, urban regeneration, smart urban technologies, food in cities, urban ecology, health, housing, transport inequalities, urban transformation, climate, historic cities, heritage, uh, mobilities, uh, urban informatics, urban morphology, and many others. And as you can see, it's very diverse and very broad. Um, it, it, uh, it, 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 so very comprehensive, let's say. Sometimes when I click, it doesn't go. Oh, there we are. Book series. I have. I just selected a few because, like I said, uh, it was more than a hundred. Just to check. Yeah, more than a hundred. And this is just a selection of a few, just to give you a quick presentation of the main ones that we have. The biggest one that we have is the urban book series that was created in 2016, and we already have more than. 100 titles published and it does very well, it's very well promoted, a big success and it's worth taking a look. Cities in Nature is also doing well and uh, it's more related to uh, urban ecology, greening, planning with the environment in mind, um, uh, and topics related to nature. Right, and then we have many others that are listed here. Cities research, urban and landscape perspectives, which is more theoretical, urban agriculture. One series on governance, mainly. Uh, this series, theory and, pra and practice of urban sustainability transitions with very high average citations. And this is the average per title is, is quite high. So this is what I mean by average citations. Uh, per title are, are really, really high. And we also have one on health, on uh, urban design, future city, in a briefs, which are compact publications. And this one is on architectural design, one series on urban change. So whatever your idea is, I'm sure we'll have a home for it. And let, oh, sorry, and last but not least, we have a new series coming up, which doesn't have a cover yet, but will very soon. It's Cities, Heritage and Transformation. This one looks a bit more back, um, more historic, but that doesn't mean to say that uh, we don't uh, think a lot about the future. But this one is a bit more um, um, aimed at heritage in the historic cities. So these, whichever idea you have, I'm sure we'll find a good home for it. And I selected a few titles just, just to show as very successful ones that had high sales or high downloads, just as a quick overview. Um, so these were some, uh, some were are open access as you can see, maybe Springer Open, for instance, this one is. It had really high downloads. This is on water heritage, it's quite good. Uh, housing estates had a lot of downloads, climate change in cities, also very successful. All of these urban visions, um, very solid work, beautiful book, that did very well. Urban morphology also a bestseller, and 
these are all worth checking if, if you're interested or just out of interest these, these are some topics that that did well um i i briefly mentioned before but more and more open access is uh is taking off especially in urban related disciplines i see a lot of interest and uh, because with open access you can reach um, a lot of people and you have a lot more downloads than um, your traditional non-open access book and we estimate that on average it's 10 times more downloads than um, a non-open access book and 2.4 more citations you have a lot more impact if you publish the book as open access and open access means that it will be freely available to for anyone to access it and also you uh, other people can um, share it a bit more easily without going through permission uh, it, uh, problems they as long as they refer to the source they can use a, um, build on the work much more easily um, and here I have a few examples from the program of some open access books we published and it's incredible to see the impact of these books and uh, the number of downloads because many of these were only published a few months ago and uh, they already had have a lot lots for instance urban socioeconomic segregation and income inequality it's been published i think in may approximately this year may this year and it already has more than 114,000 downloads it's very incredible really um then also this book, Introduction to Space Syntax, is doing really well, um, but it's just been published, I think, last month, very recent. And uh, you can see it, it's worth it. There is a fee involved, of course, because if we have to make the book freely available, they can always give you a quote. And we have also information about the fees online on our website. If you're, you're interested but these are, are um, good if you have funding available from the university uh, or grant money that you can use to, to also allocate part of that into the book it's really a good idea um, and then it's it's worth mentioning you might have an idea but it could we have many different types of books that your idea would fit could fit into most of our books are research books and uh, that I would call edited or edited book or monograph. Um, but we also publish textbooks, which are mainly for students and uh, spring briefs, which are compact books of uh, 50 to 125 pages approximately. And these books, spring briefs, are also great for people who are starting to think about book publishing who haven't published before starting their career because it can be really daunting to start with a traditional book of 200 pages and this um, this format then is is recommended um, and it, it's a neat and it's also neat for case studies or short um, short books really we also have proceedings which are collections from um, from conferences with a really fast turnaround time um, and popular science works which are for a more generic audience interested in science like this title here America's most sustainable cities and regions it's written for a broader audience and on a really opposite spectrum is below handbooks and reference works and that can also be encyclopedias dictionaries now, I can't think of another type besides encyclopedias, dictionaries, handbooks. I think that's most of it. Maybe there are other types. But basically, these are very uh, authoritative books of at least a thousand pages. They're reference works that will have um, a bigger impact. And um, I wanted to, to say a little bit about our SDG program. And our SDG series, I think it's worth mentioning. We have, I didn't include it before in the slide because I thought it deserves its own slide. Our Sustainable Development Goals book series. It's a book series dedicated, well, obviously, to the SDGs, 
but it publishes books that focus on at least one of the SDGs or that connect um, um, more SDGs in one, in one volume. Um, and uh, so the series is really being promoted and by our sales and marketing department and doing very well. Uh, worth taking a look for those that do research on sustainable development goals. Um, and also related to SDGs is our SDG hub. It's the portal on spring in nature that we, uh, where we promote our content. And we have an SDG 11 hub that particularly has a lot of uh, material or, or a lot of books that might be interesting to, to have a look. Um, I know that not everything that people do in, uh, in, in urban studies, um, planning and urban geography, etc., related disciplines, might not be related to SDG 11. So we had a, a page and we're coming up with a new one for Spring and Nature. And so that is soon. And for now, we have lots uh, in, uh, on SDG, um, on our SDG 11 hub and also on springer.com. But we'll, we'll work on a new hub to highlight it a bit more because I, I think uh, it's worth it. So, right, I'm almost fin finished actually. So this, I wanted to um, let you know, if, if you have an idea, you'd like to submit a proposal, you're welcome to contact me. These are my contact details. Um, this is my email and I, I tried to, oh, sorry, I jumped. Uh, publishing editor that, uh, I'll put it in the chat in a bit. And this is the link, that should be. Oh yeah, did you already put it in the chat? The, uh, the link to submit a proposal is in the chat, which you can use, uh, um, or you can contact me, whichever you prefer. All right, so I, I hope I didn't rush too much, and um, but I think it's, um, so it's time for questions. Right. <laughs> yes, thanks, Juliana. I hope can you hear some me? questions there, I can hear you. Yeah. Good. Um, yeah, we do. I've put some links in the chat you may have seen throughout the webinar to lead you directly to the further information where we will find further information for book authors. Um, yeah, we have one question is, um, what is the procedure for publishing an open access book? I know you touched on it a bit, but maybe if you could just summarize, Juliana, what we... Mm -hmm. It's the same for any book. But I, I would, um, but I would give you a quote for uh, how, for for the open access book, and then um, then we'd go from that. Yeah, and um, yeah, and then the advantages, as I said, it's really visibility, so it's worth it if you're thinking about it. But it's not not different from any type of book. I see I'm frozen there for some reason. Yes, and I think you'll find uh, information on funding opportunities also on our web pages. Exactly. There. So, um, yeah. One question Who holds the copyright for published books? Well, authors hold the copyright, and uh, you can, this, uh, you give us basically a license to publish and distribute the work and sell it, but you own the copyright to the work mm -hmm. as, as author of the book. Okay, then there's a quite a long question about Scopus. I don't know, Juliana, maybe you want to look in the chat, uh, in the questions oh, box yourself. I have to take it, it out. It says yeah. that, well, the question basically is that Scopus indexes chapters as documents and not the whole book. Um, mm. And so the citation impact increases if people quote the whole book, if you, if you have any tips on um, how that can best be managed, but that is also otherwise something we could come back to offline. But maybe yeah, you want to have a read the the question yourself offline because I'm not I'm not familiar with that in that uh, sense with the chapter as opposed to the whole book. But the, okay. I know, yeah, well, yeah, no, 
I haven't had this question before and I've received lots about indexing, so I'd have to get mm -hmm. back to you on that. Maybe that's something we could uh, look into and get back to the person who asked the question. Great. Uh, then there was a question about books versus journals. So whether you think that journal articles are more valued than books in assessing promotion or if maybe that has changed a little how important books are. Um, I, I think that will depend for country and for discipline and I can't answer that because my view is really as a publishing editor is, is I, can, I can't comment on that and it's um, no I, I couldn't say it, it would be no I, I, I don't know really mm -hmm. in, that, in that sense that goes out a bit of what I do let's <laughs> say um. I am a non-native English speaker. Do you provide English language editing tools? Yes, uh, we do. Well, we have a, an affiliated program which you can use, um, but there are there are costs because we don't have in-house people that will uh, will do that. We have we offer basic copy editing and uh, grammar spell check for for our books but anything that is really in depth we do have affiliate services that we offer uh, AJE and I can give you more information if you're interested and that's a possibility for for you and also translations they I think they do yeah I've just looked up the link and I'll put that in the chat for English language editing services um, do I need to pay anything for publishing my book? No, you don't have to publish. No, there are no costs involved. Okay, I think that was now. Uh, there's some more questions here. Um, uh, in a book on quantitative methods replicating published material, does the does does, the, does Springer get the required permissions? So tables and texts from other material, or is that something the author has to do? I the would permissions, have thought. permissions mm -hmm. in general, authors are responsible for. Um, we help you with how you can get permissions. We have forms, and or you can do it through RightsLink, which is a website that a lot, lots of publishers use. It um, makes it easier to to acquire permission, but authors should do that. And I do suggest to start that early on when you're preparing the manuscript because it can be one of the things that delays uh, sub submitting to us. Okay, then we have one question. What are, what are the major components of a proposal? Right, I, I touched a bit about that. You mean, um, mean about what we want? Do you think they mean about what, what we want to see it in? I imagine. That's probably if you go to the book submission form, that'll lead you through what needs to be submitted. Exactly. I think that would be helpful. Because there it already tells you, and also we have forms that, that I, I can send you, uh, but also th that, that one will have. But in terms of what the publisher is looking for, I would say the points I said before, Mm -hmm. um, you should sell the work, you should pitch it, make sure you know your aims and objectives when you send us a proposal. Um, it, because if, if you don't know it, it, what the aims are yet, if it's too vague, if it's too early, mm -hmm. then we won't know. Things like that. And it has to have a market. Um, that's what we're looking for. Yeah. So. So a couple of people have asked about the cost of um, publishing open access books. So someone's asking an example of a monograph or is there a, yeah. any reference that people can look up? There's a link. Um, I'm sure that there's a link. And um, hmm, I could maybe look really quickly. I should, uh, or I, I, would, I could do it afterwards. Mm -hmm. Otherwise uh, I, I'm skipping things. Maybe one idea also would be then to contact you, Juliana with a yeah. pro, you know, rough sketch, what is it you want to publish, how big, how many pages, that kind of thing. Exactly, because uh, we usually we would, we would be able to get back to you on that. Right, and we'll let you know. I think that's the best. Thing. Okay, then we have one uh, question about, is there a book series that covers space and place, not just I cities? Think, I don't think specifically, but, um, even our urban series are a bit 
uh, more than cities, I would say. So if you have a, a look at that, I don't think it would be a problem necessarily. It's not so, just cities, it's also space. So it might mm -hmm. fit into one of our other existing series. So I think the idea mm -hmm. would be to submit your proposal to us or contact Juliana to ask about that specifically. Um, yeah, how many pages are ideal for an edited book or for an authored book? Is there any difference? Is there any recommendation? That's a good question. I, I think approximately 200 and we, uh, I, I say about 90,000 words, more or less. Uh, if it's too short, we can consider doing it as a brief, like I mentioned, those contact, compact books, but those are 50 to 125. But then the traditional sizes are about 200. Then someone's asking uh, if someone has an idea, should they contact you, Juliana, or submit it via the form? I think it maybe depends on the stage of the proposal. Yes, it's, and as as they prefer. Either way, uh, it will get to me in any case. If you if you fill in the form or if you email me, um, I will I will see your email and I, I will make sure that uh, it gets answered and it will help you. Okay, uh, can you please explain the system of publishing books in the Springer Briefs series? What's the word limit there? The word limit, um, I think it's something around 44,000 words, 40,000 approximately. Uh, right now I'm not really sure. I think so, because uh, I, ha I even have a, a form for briefs and it's about 40,000. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, do we publish books focusing on particular regions? Yes, we do. That's not a problem. And especially on urban, we have lots of case studies or it could be comparative case studies and not necessarily books on certain regions. That, that's fine. Mm -hmm. um, one challenge is using book templates. Is this, if this is problematic, does Springer help? Is the question. I'm not sure which book templates. I think maybe, maybe he, he needs a book proposal form, but I'm not sure why it's a problem. Um, it, I think they're really helpful to us to give us an overview and, and covers all any questions I might have about the proposal. Mm -hmm. uh, the forms we have, uh, we'll, we'll cover them. So um, if you have any specific question that you can't answer and you're in tr mm -hmm. having trouble with, do let us know. And I, okay. I can help you. Um, yeah, uh, I think a very long question here. Someone who is coordinating a seminar with contributors writing a paper and would this be interesting for us? I think the answer probably is yes. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. I think so. is this a seminar? I, I think mm -hmm. I see. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Do send through, you know, just a few details, either a few details by email, if you have a more concrete information already, maybe the form helps you structure what you can send us. So either way. Um, yeah, how does Springer rate handbooks against different publishing formats? What does, what does he or oh, she mean by rate, you think? Rate books. Um, well, it, it's, well, maybe it's much maybe longer. The difference between handbooks and other books, how they are published, you know, how many people contribute to a handbook. Probably a oh, different. Uh, yeah, handbooks are massive works, mm -hmm. uh, like I mentioned before, of at least a thousand words. And I've, I didn't, uh, no, a thousand pages. What I didn't say is that they're really broad topics. Uh, you could have a handbook on urban planning, say, and there you cover anything an urban planner or someone uh, doing research on planning needs to know. Um, and it's, it's, it, it's, um, uh, yeah, I think. That way, that they're much more, much different than than uh, a traditional books. Their broader mm -hmm. coverage. Um, of, of okay. Topics. So it's very nearly quarter two. We have one last question. How much time does it normally take to accept a book proposal upon submission? Yeah, that's a question we get a lot. I was surprised I didn't see it earlier. <laughs> um, yeah, um, to get it accepted, right? So. 
um, after you have a completed book proposal, I would say four to eight weeks review time approximately. It depends on when you send it, if it's a very busy time of the year, but usually four to eight weeks um, you can expect to get to have feedback from us. But this is more or less. Um, and if there are any problems, I, I will inform you, but usually that, that's the time it takes on average. Okay, I think it's time to wrap up. Do contact us uh, or Juliana if you have any more questions or with your proposals. So I'll hand over yeah. back to you, Juliana. Um, thank you all very much for attending. Yes, on my last slide. <laughs> uh, there are my contact details again. Thank you, I really appreciate it. And uh, I will, we will be in touch with uh, the recording afterwards. I didn't mention that. And any other questions, I'll follow up afterwards or do feel free to contact me and submit your proposal or with any ideas or questions, I'm happy to hear from you. All right, everyone, um, I'll take care and I'll be, we'll hopefully be in touch. <laughs> All right. Thank you for joining and Thank we look you. forward to working with you. Yes. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.